Hello everybody, I'm Ross Atkin, I'm a product designer and today I'm going to talk to you about evaluating your designs. So for me, um, evaluation is all about working out what's working and what isn't working about your design um, so you can fix the bad stuff and uh, make the good stuff even better. So for me, um, this is connected to modelling because um, you have to have modelled something so you can evaluate it. I guess there are three reasons for uh, doing modelling. Um, one is uh, to help you understand something yourself. I find I end up building models for myself quite often um, so I can understand complicated geometry and how things fit together or how different materials perform. I also uh, make models to help me understand the look and feel of um, materials and colours both uh, in physical products and uh, in digital ones and I, uh, I find that helps me make uh, better decisions about that kind of thing. The second reason that I often make models is to help uh, somebody else understand a a design that's been proposed but doesn't exist yet. As I mentioned in a previous video, um, I often make uh, scale models of street layouts uh, so that um, different disabled people can get a better idea of how that street layout is actually going to work. I also end up making things to describe how um, digital services are going to work when they're all put together um, without building anything and uh, sometimes these can just be like storyboards or I found um, Making like lo-fi animations um, can be a really, really effective way of um, modeling a kind of end-to-end -end service um, without having built all the digital components. Um, because actually trying to explain how something like that's going to work to uh, to people can be quite difficult. But when you're kind of um, visualizing a person's journey using the service uh, with an animation, that's a really, really nice way. So uh, the third reason to build models and uh, probably the most important and what this video is about is... Uh, building models to find out something you don't know. In design engineering, people often refer to this kind of thing as a risk. A risk means um, something that your design is gonna have to be able to do that you don't know for sure that it can do. So for me, these kind of risks fall into two big categories, uh, technical risks and human risks. By technical risk, I mean, will it work technically? In order to work out how you're going to test whether it's going to work technically, you have to define what working means. Lately I've been designing a lot of things to be made on um, cheap 3D printing machines like this out of um, PLA material and um, the strength of the material isn't brilliant and so um, I find myself often building prototypes and doing tests to see whether the things I'm designing are strong enough or whether I need to improve the design. In that uh, context, working is easy to define. Um, can I use the thing that I've made in the context it's designed to be used in without it breaking? Um, something to think about um, when you're trying to work out whether something's working or not is uh, reliability. So it's often quite helpful to define the level of reliability that you think is acceptable um, before you start the testing process. I designed the um, cable retraction system in this vacuum cleaner when I was at Dyson. It was a difficult problem because um, the space it needed to fit in was very small and it was an awkward shape. And uh, I was set the problem of achieving 98% reliability. And that meant it could only fail to retract the cable in one in 50 times you tried to, to use it. I achieved 75% uh, reliability in the second week that I was working on the project, but um, it took four months to get to 98%. Uh, when you need uh, reliability that's relatively high like that, um, you have to do a lot of testing just to work out where you are. If you've got low reliability, you don't have to do that many tests to prove that. But if you think you've got high reliability, you end up having to do um, a lot of tests to prove that you have high reliability. By the time I'd resolved this cable rewind, I'd done seven and a half thousand rewind tests. Another bit of technical modeling and evaluation that I find myself doing when I'm working on digital products is end-to-end um, -end tests. So um, I might believe that um, we can connect together a whole load of pieces of technology in order to um, solve a problem. You know, things like apps, backend services, bits of embedded hardware. Uh, it's only when I've built something that creates the end-to-end uh, -end experience that I'm aiming at, even if it's in a bit of a hacky way, that um, I really know that it's going to work. Um, and also, once I have something like that, I'm able to make evaluations about things like latency, how long is the delay between uh, something happening in one part of the system and it being reflected in another part of the system. You only really get a feel for what that's going to be like by building it and also you only really get a feel for how that's going to feel for the user by using it. So for me technical risk is the easier of the two kinds of risk because um, it's relatively straightforward to uh, define when something's working 
and uh, and it's easy to design tests to work out whether something's working. Whether something's working for uh, humans, for the intended user for your uh, product is much harder. Um, essentially because human experience is subjective and also because people don't always say uh, what they really mean. Particularly to you, the designer who's designed something that they're testing because um, they don't want to be impolite. So the thing uh, that I'm really trying to find out when I'm doing testing with humans is, does this product work for them? The most straightforward way of doing this is uh, to give them the product in as realistic a context as possible, watch what they do with it, and then speak to them about it. That's an uh, inherently very subjective way of going about this, but um, from the perspective of getting useful feedback that you can act on as a designer, um, I think it's really, really great. Ideally, you want to do it with um, multiple people that sort of represent your target user group. And then by looking at the things that they did and said that were similar for all of them and the things that were different, you can take a view about um, how it's likely to be received by the whole of that user group. Although you are always stretching to do that. In terms of doing uh, slightly more controllable and potentially objective testing with humans, um, I'm a big fan of A-B tests. These are used a lot by people that are designing websites and uh, online marketing. What they tend to do is to just design two different versions of um, the thing they're interested in testing, show it to tens or thousands of people and uh, see how their behavior is different with the different versions, which obviously when it's a digital thing, you can collect masses of data about how people use it. If you are working on something digital, it is actually surprisingly cheap to do this kind of thing. You can get Facebook to show something to 10,000 people for about the same price as a 400 by 600 mil sheet of acrylic. You can also do A-B tests on actual physical products. I ran an A-B test on a real street in London um, to evaluate a set of changes to the way that roadworks are signed and guarded, which I hoped would make it easier for people with sight loss to navigate. Uh, we set up two sites with the same layout, one using my improvements and uh, one using the traditional setup. Uh, we got 13 people with sight loss to navigate each site. We got them to rate their comfort level after navigating each one and uh, we got them to explain how they felt and um, what was making things easier and more difficult for them. So to summarize, when you're trying to evaluate your design, um, try and identify where your biggest risks are. Are they technical or are they human? And then try and design tests in order to understand whether your design succeeds in those areas. Try and model the thing that's easiest and cheapest to make that will allow you to work that out. And um, try and define your criteria for success before you start the experiment. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck and take care.